What's going on guys? My name is Alex. Welcome back to a brand new video and you're about to watch a collaboration between me and Pro Edits. Now if you guys don't know who Pro Edits is, it is basically a YouTuber that does the same thing, create awesome tutorials and Vegas Pro and everything like that. And a while back he basically recreated my, you know, the intro with the cloud and everything in Vegas Pro 15. So today we have our first collaboration and in this video he is going to show you guys how to create an epic AMV, something that you guys have been requesting for a while so guys make sure to show him some support his link is in the description so guys enjoy the video thank you guys also so much for watching and this is the video Now before this video starts, I would like to announce that the Sony Vegas Mega Transitions and FX Pack is out. You can go ahead and check it out. The link will be in the description below. It contains over 100 A inspired transitions to step up your editing game. Make sure to check it out. What's up guys? Pro Edits here and welcome back to yet another brand new Vegas Pro editing tutorial by Pro Edits. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how I go about adding effects to my clip in order to end up with a lit AMV. So I will say let's get started. So this tutorial is best for intermediate level and I assume you already know the basics of this editing software and know how to make a basic AMV. So first thing first, I already have marked my beats and have my clip in here. So I'm going to be showing you how to edit up till here because right at this point we are going to be getting in, into a transition. So all the tutorial assets along with the project file will be linked in the description below so you can go ahead and download them and refer to the project file if you need any help. So first thing first, we're going to be adding Twixter to our clip. Just copy the settings which you're seeing on the screen right now. So one thing you want to make sure that the frame rate of your Twixter is the same as that of your project settings. So let me quickly change it to that of my project settings. And now just like you do with your Twixter clips, you want to go to the end of your clip, click control and compress it in as much as you can and press control again and expand it up till where you want it to be. So let's say up till here in this case. Now once we have this, we are going to be doing some Twixter speed remapping. So let's click the stopwatch besides our speed and on our first keyframe, the speed is going to be set to a 300% and the keyframe type to a fast fade. Now since we are working with a 60 frames per second composition, the distance between keyframes is going to be 12 frames. If you are working with a 30, you want to make sure that the distance between the keyframes is half the size. Also you want to make sure that the preview quality of your preview window is set to a quarter. So go to your 12th frame and change the speed back down to 10 and make it into a slow fade. Now go to your next beat add a keyframe, change the speed to 300% and make it into a fast fade. By now you might have already understood that on each and every beat the speed is going to be 300% and the keyframe is going to be a fast fade. If you're having this red screen on your preview window like I am having right now, this is basically a sign to indicate that we have exceeded the size of our clip. If I go to the midpoint between these two keyframes, since these two keyframes are so close to each other, we are going to be adding only one keyframe between both of them. Change the speed to 10% and make it into a slow fade. Don't forget that on this beat right here where the value is set to 300 you want to step back 12 frames and change the speed back to 10% and make it into a slow fade. So the same goes for this beat and this beat since the distance between both the keyframes is really minimal. So because of this these two keyframes will be sharing one keyframe. Let's add a keyframe, change it to slow fade and the speed to 10%. So once you have this we are pretty much done with our Twixter speed remapping. It's time to move on to our velocity. So right click on your clip, click insert, remove envelope and choose velocity. Now here comes the tricky part. So when working with velocity there are no particular fixed values you want to follow but one thing you want to make sure just the way we did with Twixter the slow fade keyframes have a value below 100% and all the keyframes which are on the beat or are fast fade have a value of above 100%. Firstly you want to add points on all of your beats so right click and click add point or simply double click on the beat to add a point. So now once you have placed all of your points you want to change these points to a fast fade. 
Once you change them to a fast fade, now you want to follow the path of these keyframes right here. So for every slow fade keyframe, there's going to be a point, which is going to be a slow fade as well. So 12 frames behind from here. Now once you're done adding these points, it's time to change the value of our velocity. So you want to go to your second point, which is supposed to be a slow fade. And you want to increase the value of the first point up to the point where you want the clip to be. So let's say I will increase it up to this point where these two are about to get into a battle. Now you want to go to your next beat and go to the point before it. Now once again, you want to change the value of the point on the following beat. Let's say I want to sync it up till here where these two finally collide. So you want to increase your velocity until you get there. Now, as you can see in this case, it is synced perfectly. You want to do the same with all of your beats. Now, once you have your velocity down, you want to add a transition. So if you might have noticed, I already have marked all of my beats along with the actions which we are going to be performing on those particular beats. So there is no particular rule set for transitions like which transitions to use where. It's all on your creativity and your personal preference. You can use any transition wherever you like. So you want to add s more curves to your clip for your transitions. Change the wrap X and Y to a reflect. And now we're going to be doing a zoom out at the start of our clip. So animate the Z distance. Make the first keyframe into a fast fade and change the value to a 0.5. Go forward 12 frames again and change the Z distance to 1. And make this keyframe into a slow fade. Now if you can notice, right here we're going to be having a couple of pumps. So you want to go to the point where you will have your pump and add a keyframe. Make this keyframe into a fast fade and change the value to a 0.5. Once again, step back 12 frames, add a keyframe, making this into a slow fade and change the value to a 0.9. Once again, you want to move forward 12 frames and change the Z distance back to 1, making this keyframe into a slow fade. Since there are a couple of pumps, we're going to be repeating these keyframes here as well. Now, once you have all of this down, so right at the end of this clip, we are going to be having our slight transition. So this is going to be a slight transition on the right side, mainly for your transitions. The only plugin you will require is the s Mo Curves, which is by Sapphire. We are going to be animating our shift X. So for the other transitions, you can easily refer to the AMV project file, which is linked in the description below. So you want to add a keyframe 12 frames back from the last frame for your shift X and make this into a slow fade. Go to your last frame, make it into a fast fade. Now one thing you want to make sure that your transitions last for 12 frames. For 30 frames per second, the transitions are going to be lasting half as long. Change the value of the shift X to minus 0.5 on your last keyframe. So you have like a slight transition onto the right side. Once I have my transitions done, I usually add my shake. So for my shake, I like to use the S shake. So add the S shake to your clip and copy these values which you're seeing on the screen right now. And now we're going to be animating our amplitude. And now we're going to be animating our amplitude. Change the value on your first frame to 2. Go forward 12 frames and change the value back to 0, making this into a slow fade. I'm adding a shake in here since we have a transition at this point, a zoom out transition. The next shake is going to be right here at both of these pumps. And one last shake is going to be right here where we have our slight transition. So you want to go to your next beat, change the amplitude value to 2. Step back 12 frames, change the amplitude value back to zero and make it into a slow fade. Now go 12 frames forward again from point where the beat is and change the amplitude back to zero and make this into a slow fade. Now you want to follow this pattern with all of your movements. You want to accompany each and every one of your transitions with these shakes. Now once you have these down, now it's time to color correct our clip. The color correction I'm going to be using on this clip right here is available in the 30cc pack which I made earlier which is completely free. You can download it from the freebies playlist or I will link it in the description below. So once you choose the preset you like from the drop down, you want to press finished. So right after my color correction, I usually add my black bars and some watermarks. So for the black bars, you want to insert a new video track, add a black solid to this track, trim it. And now you want to go to the first keyframe for your masking, enable it, grab your rectangular tool and make a rectangular mask, which perfectly coincides with the top and the bottom sides of your screen now change the mode to a negative so now if you go on to either of the top or the bottom sides and click control while dragging your mouse inwards 
it should create these black bars. Now you can easily animate them by keyframing their positions. I have a tutorial on how to animate black bars so I will link that in the description below as well. It's time to add our watermark so insert a new video track again choose a legacy text and add it to your clip. I already have my watermark saved as a preset so I will quickly add it and as you can see I use the Bang Gothic font with the size 28 points and to place your text you can simply place it by clicking placement and let's say I want to place it at the bottom right corner of my screen right here. Now once I have all of this down I usually add some flares if needed but in this case in this clip I won't be adding any flares so for my flares you can easily refer to the project file which is linked in the description below and I use the hit film lens flares for it by the way. So let's Let's add some flash elements. I like to use flash elements a lot with my edits. I will link the pack in the description below. It's completely free. It contains over 140 elements which you can use in your edits. So I'm going to be using this particular animation right here. Firstly you want to key out the background. So add chroma key here. Change the key color to black and just increase your low threshold and decrease your high threshold once you have your background keyed out perfectly you want to position it so let's say in this case i will position my flash element around these characters which are fighting at the bottom of the screen so making sure that you don't end up making more keyframes you want to drag your first keyframe to your current frame in this case i'm going to be positioning my flash element around these characters which are fighting at the bottom of our screen. Now once you have your flash element down, you can use a logo which is of yours or your squad or let's say the T3C anime logo for that matter. I usually like using logos because they really make the edit look more legit and more lit. So the logo can be positioned anywhere in the edit. Now once you're done with all of this, you want to insert a new video track and now I like to usually add the particles overlay to my clip so let's quickly import the particles overlay and you want to change the compositing mode to a dodge now once you're done with all of this it's time to add some fake camera movements some rsmb so for my fake camera movements i use s shake so you want to add the s shake to your clip and copy these values which you're seeing on the screen right now which are meant for a fake camera movement it's time to add rsmb to your clip i wouldn't recommend you to add the rsmb to each and every one of your clips separately you can simply add it to the whole track itself by adding it to the track fx right here so if you're working with the vegas pro 15 you can easily enable the track effects by clicking the three line icon and clicking edit visible button set and enabling the track effects so let's say for this tutorial sake i will add it to my clip and pretty much it that's how i make my amvs there's definitely a lot more to it than what i have just shown most of which is thinking and imagination one final tip before we leave so you can add the sound effects from the anime itself to make your edits look more lit just like how detsuki does it So that's it for this tutorial guys i hope you found this helpful if so make sure to smash that thumbs up button and subscribe if you haven't subscribed already pro skill checking out peace out <laughs>